Hey everybody, welcome to 2ZQ Hot Takes, where we discuss issues both big and small. I am your host, the very handsome Tim Kirk, and this time, I'll be talking about the power of three. You might be surprised at how much of civilization is based on the power of threes. Everything from the psychology of industry and advertising, and politics and storytelling, to comedy, to mythology, to belief systems, to math and science. And I will slip all around the place with this because it is so deeply intertwined and enmeshed into our collective consciousness that it will have to go all over the place. And as I do, please forgive. The three wise men, we three kings of Orient, Balthazar, Gaspar, Melchior, usually the third film in a trilogy is kind of lame. But that's where the adaptation of the economic concept of the law of diminishing returns comes into play. The point of diminishing returns refers to a point after the optimal level of capacity is reached, where every added unit of production results in a smaller increase in output. These things of three, so intriguing. I love the number three. My birth month is March, so three is part of my identity as far as entering required info on procedural forms for a lot of stuff. I might have a little OCD as far as mentally grouping things in threes. I always have. I see three as the color green in my mind. I think of it as being mystical, without any reason to support it. I just sense this from the far reaches of the corners of my mind, without explanation. <laughs> from the myth of three act structure first act the beginning second act the middle third act the end well that's that the three little pigs the three stooges three wishes three little words triad triple crown trifecta triumph triptych trilateral Triangle, Tres Leches, The Three Amigos. For Catholics, Three Hail Marys is a common penance for many sins. Three Godfathers, Three Coins in the Fountain, Three on a Couch, Three Days of the Condor, The Three Faces of Eve, Three the Hard Way, Three Men and a Baby, Three on a Match, Three's Company, One, Two, Three Red Light, 3-2-1 Contact, 3-Card Monty, the classic trilogies of modern pop culture, Back to the Future, Lord of the Rings, Star Wars has had three trilogies so far, and lest we forget a few important trios in pop culture, Luke, Leia, and Han, Harry, Ron, and Hermione, Dorothy, Rose, and Blanche, Peter, Paul, and Mary, the Three Living Dead Movies, Night, Dawn, and Day, Evil Dead, The Godfather, and Novel, Films, and Candy, Three Musketeers, written by Alexander Dumas, whose son wrote, created the term La Demimonde, which was the subject of a previous pod. The Matrix, Ellipses, which are three dots or periods. In Music Again, Knock Three Times, Give Me Three Steps, Three Little Birds by Bob Marley. Unts, Tice, Feet Times a Matey, Three Times a Lady, Three Card Trick by The Clash, Quarter to Three, Gary U.S. Bonds, Mistake Number Three, Boy George and Culture Club, Here, There, and Everywhere, The Beatles, Three is a Magic Number, Hop, Skip, and Jump, First Base, Second Base, Third Base, Who's on first? What's on second? I don't know who's on third. Three stage rockets. Three point turn. Three point landing. Three points in a field goal. Three pointers in basketball. This, that, and the other. In chemistry, there are three states of matter. Solid, liquid, and gas. In number theory, 
All powers of three are perfect totient numbers. The sums of distinct powers of three form a Stanley sequence. Like I know what I'm talking about. Graham's number, an enormous number arising from a proof in Ramsey theory, is, in the version popularized by Martin Gardner, a power of three. However, the actual publication of the proof by Ronald Graham used a different number. <laughs> what do you know? In number theory, a perfect totient number is an integer that is equal to the sum of its iterated totients. That is, we apply the totient function to a number n, apply it again to the resulting totient, and so on, until the number one is reached and add together the resulting sequence of numbers. If the sum equals n, then n is a perfect totient number. All to do with the power of three. It can be observed that many perfect totient numbers are multiples of three. In fact, 4375 is the smallest perfect totient number that is not divisible by three. And now, back to being dumb. Google search says, what are the three main themes of popular culture. Three themes of popular culture are that individual voices are valid, nothing is private, and celebrity status is no longer afforded to only the most beautiful. The rule of three in writing from Wikipedia. The story of Goldilocks and the Three Bears uses the rule of three extensively with the protagonist examining three sets of three items in a house finding only the third of each set to be satisfactory. The rule of three is a writing principle that suggests that a trio of events or characters is more humorous, satisfying, or effective than other numbers. The audience of this form of text is also thereby more likely to remember the information conveyed because having three entities combines both brevity and rhythm with having the smallest amount of information to create a pattern. Slogans, film titles, and a variety of other things have been structured in threes, a tradition that grew out of oral storytelling. And again, examples include the three little pigs, three billy goats gruff, and the three musketeers. The rule of three can refer to a collection of three words, phrases, sentences, lines, paragraph, stanzas, chapters, sections of writing, and even whole books. The three elements together are known as a triad. The technique is used not just in prose, but also in poetry, oral storytelling, films, and advertising. In photography, the rule of thirds produces a similar effect by dividing an image into three vertically and horizontally. A tricolon is more specific use of the rule of three, where three words or phrases are equal in length and grammatical form. A hendriatus is a figure of speech where three successive words are used to express a single central idea. As a slogan or motto, this is known as a tripartite motto. Many advertising campaigns and public information slogans use the technique to create a catchy, memorable way of displaying information. In marketing theory, American advertising and sales pioneer St. Elmo Lewis laid out his three chief copywriting principles, which he felt were crucial for effective advertising. The mission of an advertisement is to attract a reader so that they will look at the advertisement and start to read it, then to interest them, so that they will continue to read it, then to convince them, so that when they have read it, they will believe it. If an advertisement contains these three qualities of success, it is a successful advertisement. Better known examples include life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, rights outlined in the U.S. Declaration of Independence. Liberté, égalité, fraternité, the slogan of the French Republic predating 1790. Einigkeit und Recht und Freiheit, opening line of German national anthem. A Mars a day helps you work, rest, and play. Mars advertising slogan since 1959. Stop, look, and listen, a public road and level crossing safety slogan. Stop, drop, and roll, a fire safety slogan. Faster, higher, stronger, the Olympic motto. Veni, vidi, vici, a triad translated from Latin as I came, I saw, I conquered, popularly attributed to Julius Caesar of Rome. Slip, slop, slap, Australian sun protection campaign. Three wise monkeys. See no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. 
Turn on, tune in, drop out. 1960s counterculture era phrase popularized by Timothy Leary. In comedy, the rule of three is also called a comic triple and is one of the many comedic devices regularly used by humorists, writers, and comedians. The third element of the triple is often used to create an effect of surprise with the audience and is frequently the punchline of the joke itself. For instance, jokes might feature three stereotypical individuals, such as an Englishman, an Irishman, and a Scotsman, or a blonde, a brunette, and a redhead, where the surprise or punchline of the joke comes from the third character. The comedic rule of three is often paired with quick timing, ensuring that the viewers have less time to catch onto the patterns before the punchline hits. As a whole, the comedic rule of threes relies on setting up a pattern of two items and then subverting viewer expectations by breaking that pattern with the third item. One particularly notable example comes from the Dick Van Dyke Show. Can I get you anything? Cup of coffee? Donut? Toupee? Just like most comedic writing, the rule of threes in comedy relies on building tension to a comedic release. In the case of the rule of threes, tension is built with the first two items in the pattern and then released with the final item, which should be the funniest of the three. Most triples are short in length and often two or only three sentences, but the rule can be implemented effectively at longer length as long as the base formula is still followed. In storytelling, authors often create triplets or structures in three parts. In the rule's simplest form, this is merely beginning, middle, and end, as expressed in Aristotle's Poetics. Snow White receives three visits from her wicked stepmother. Vladimir Propp, in his Morphology of the Folktale, concluded that any of the elements in a folktale could be negated twice so that it would repeat thrice. This is common not only in the Russian tales he studied, but throughout folk tales and fairy tales, most commonly perhaps in that the youngest son is usually the third, although fairy tales often display the rule of three in the most blatant form. A small sample of the latter includes Rumple Stiltskin spins thrice for the heroine and lets her guess his name thrice over a period of three days. In East of the Sun and West of the Moon, the heroine receives three gifts while searching for her lost husband. When she finds where he is held prisoner, she must use them to thrice bribe her way to the hero. The first two times she was unable to tell her story because he lay in a drugged sleep. In Brother and Sister, Brother is transformed into a deer when he drinks from the third stream that their wicked stepmother enchanted. And when Sister was killed by the same stepmother, she visits her child's room thrice being caught and restored the third time. In The Dancing Water, Singing Apple, and The Speaking Bird, a woman says she will bear the king three marvelous children. When they reappear, their envious aunts attempt to kill them by sending them on three quests after the three marvelous things of the title. In The Silent Princess, a prince breaks a peasant woman's pitcher thrice and is cursed. When he finds the title princess, he must persuade her to speak thrice. In The Love for Three Oranges, the hero picks three magical oranges, and only with the third is he able to keep the woman who springs out of it. In Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol, Marley's ghost tells Ebenezer Scrooge he will receive visits from three spirits, the ghost of Christmas past, the ghost of Christmas present, and finally, the ghost of Christmas yet to come. To which Scrooge says, Spirit, I fear you most of all. In the musical Fiddler on the Roof, Tevye must give his three eldest daughters away, one after another. In Shakespeare's Julius Caesar, Mark Antony starts his speech by using the rule of three. Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. As did Spanky McFarlane to which the commoners start to listen. The use of a series of three elements is also a well-known feature of public oratory. Max Atkinson, in his book on oratory entitled Our Master's Voices, gives examples of how public speakers use three-part phrases to generate what he calls clap traps, evoking audience applause. I never knew that's what a clap trap was. 
Martin Luther King Jr., the civil rights activist and preacher, was known for his use of tripling and the rule of three throughout his many influential speeches. For example, the speech Nonviolence and Racial Justice contained a binary opposition made up of the rule of three. Insult, injustice, and exploitation followed a few lines later by justice, goodwill, and brotherhood. Conversely, segregationist Alabama Governor George Wallace invaded segregation now, segregation tomorrow, segregation forever during his 1963 inaugural address. The appeal of the threefold pattern is also illustrated by the transformation of Winston Churchill's reference to blood, toil, tears, and sweat echoing Garibaldi and Theodore Roosevelt in popular recollection to blood, sweat, and tears. From Ideas Incorporated, your focus group and creative team has come up with 47 different ways why your credit union, your product, is superior to the competition. Your eyes glaze over all the possibilities that by using this amazing list in your marketing, you will astound the world with its obviousness, bring in monster results, and probably get a major promotion for your awesome brilliance, but it won't work. Because your audience's brains don't work that way. You see, the human brain is a funny thing. Capable of amazing mental feats, it can also lose track when there are too many things to remember, thanks to the limits of short-term memory. Point out too many points and it will be pointless. The brain won't remember any of it. The brain seems to work best thinking in threes sometimes twos or fours or fives, but mostly threes. It's actually a technique theory that dates back to at least ancient Greece, according to Wikipedia. The Latin phrase, omne trium perfectum, everything that comes in threes is perfect, or every set of three is complete, basically conveys the same idea as the rule of three. Of course, the Greeks weren't the only ones to use it. The rule of three has been used in everything from the ancient Greek symbol of the dragon's eye, which stands for the balance of love, power, and wisdom, to historical documents. Thomas Jefferson used life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. To literary works, Christmas Carol, folklore and stories, Three Musketeers, Three Little Pigs, religion, Three Wise Men and the Holy Trinity, Three Jewels of Buddhism, counterculture, sex, drugs, and rock and roll, and even Superman, truth, justice, and the American way have all used the same basic device to connect to their audiences. More recently, some of the most well-known brands and marketing campaigns have been based on three thoughts or words. Regardless of whether you like the product, consider what the phrases did for the company. We try harder. Real, comfortable jeans. Just do it. Life is good. Finger licking good. So why does three of something work? Well, besides being easier for your audience to remember, Three words or three thoughts are easier to understand. Fewer words make it easier to follow the logic. Quicker to make an emotional connection. Life is good was able to share their optimistic approach in three little words, and the world has responded. Easily quotable. A simple phrase makes it easier for people to spread the word. A great quality to have in our current social media-focused world. Unfortunately, communicating your brand, your best qualities, in as little as three words or three benefits is hard to do. It's a lot easier to prattle on and on and hope to convince your audience by the sheer volume of your words. It is considered more organic or natural to plate and arrange food in threes than fours or five. It looks too mathematic, too geometric if it's more than three, and forced, rather than to be aesthetically and gustatorially appealing. More organic in threes. The Greek goddess Hecate, portrayed in triplicate. There's a tremendous amount of historical triples. Everything from the Holy Trinity to all different types of ancient Celtic cultures. The religious iconographic repertoire of Gaul and Britain during the Roman period include a wide range of triple forms. The most common triadic depiction is that of the triple mother goddess. Ha! Hinduism, the Hindu male triad of Trimurti with their respective consorts who collectively constitute the female deity Tridevi. How about that? In Hinduism, the supreme divinity Para Brahman can take the form of Trimurti, in which the cosmic functions of creation, preservation, and destruction of the universe are performed by the three deities of Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva, 
who are at the same time three forms of one para Brahman. The divine being Dattatreya is a representation of all three of these deities incarnated as a single being. Nicene Christians profess one God and three divine persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. This is not to be understood as a belief in or worship of three gods, nor as a belief that there are three subjectively perceived aspects of one God, both of which the Catholic Church condemns as heresy. The Catholic Church also rejects the notion that God is composed of three persons and that God is a genus containing the three persons. In Neo-Paganism, from the article Triple Goddess Neo-Paganism, Peter H. Goodrich interprets the literary figure of Morgan Le Fay as a manifestation of a British triple goddess in the medieval romance Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. A modern idea of a triple goddess is central to the new religious movement of Wicca. And of course we have three ways and three of a kind. And we have the three matters of romance and the Tristan Isolde matter. Jean Baudel, a C12 poet and author of Song of the Saxons, wrote that there were three matters or topics of romance based on the geographic location and characters in the plot. The matter of France, epic and early romance prototypes mainly based on the life of Charlemagne, Charles the Great, and his court, their topics are usually single-mindedly focused on conflicted loyalties. The matter of Britain, epics and romances mainly based on the life of Arthur and his court, but eventually incorporating characters and locales from the French, German, and Roman narratives as well. Gottfried von Strasbourg Tristan. Gottfried takes Thomas's bare-bones story of a knight who falls in love with his lord's wife while bringing her to the wedding by adding a fatal love potion whose accidental ingestion prevents the lovers from obeying their duties as vassal and wife by overpowering their wills. This motif is borrowed to explain how Lancelot can engender Galahad on a woman who is not Guinevere. In both cases, the lady's nurse or maid is involved in the potion finding its way to the lover's hands. The lovers are doomed by this conflicted love leading to a romance tradition of doomed love, which also works in the Lancelot Guinevere Arthur relationship, which also might be said to be a doomed Arthur Morgos Mordred relationship. And finally, the matter of Rome, medieval adaptations of themes first found in Virgil's Aeneid about the adventures of knights who fled the fall of Troy and founded Rome. Well, three times a charm. Thanks for listening. See you next time, and as the kitties say, peace out!